Hey, how are you doing? So today we'll be starting with a new unit, blood and immune system. So let's get started. We'll be studying this unit under the following headings. Introduction, hemopoiesis, that is formation of blood cells, RBCs, hemoglobin and anemia, WBCs are the white blood cells, platelets and hemostasis mechanisms which involves your clotting mechanisms, blood groups, plasma proteins and immunology. Immunology in itself will be a series of various lectures where we'll cover immunology into great detail. Okay, starting with the introduction of blood, Blood, as we know, is a fluid connective tissue. Blood consists 55% of plasma and 45% of formed elements. Now these formed elements, these include the blood cells, that is the RBCs, okay, your WBCs and your platelets. This is what forms a formed element part. Plasma is the remaining liquid part of the blood. 55% of the blood is plasma. Now plasma constituents as such are not required. It consists mainly of water about 93% and the remaining constituents are gases that is oxygen, carbon dioxide, various electrolytes, glucose and various other plasma proteins. Okay, so plasma is 55%. Now there's another term called serum. Okay, so what's the difference between plasma and serum? Now remember plasma has various plasma proteins including clotting factors okay so plasma consists of clotting factors and fibrinogen fibrinogen is a plasma protein serum is equal to plasma minus clotting factors plus fibrinogen okay so if you remove clotting factors and fibrinogen from plasma what you get is serum now basically if you really want to know what clotting factors so these are clotting factors 2, 5 and 8. If you remove these three clotting factors and fibrinogen from plasma what you get is serum. So that's the only difference between plasma and serum and the normal volume of blood in the human body in an adult weighing about 70 to 80 kilograms it's about 5 to 5.5 liters. And the normal pH of blood is 7.35 to 7.45, okay? If it goes below 7.35, we say that the person is suffering from acidosis. And if it goes above 7.45, we say that the person is suffering from alkalosis. So that's all about the introduction of blood. Now we'll see hemopoiesis. Okay, so starting with hemopoiesis, Hemopoiesis, the word itself means, heme means blood and poiesis means synthesis or formation. So hemopoiesis refers to a process of formation of various blood cells, the RBCs, the WBCs and the platelets. Here we'll consider the general formation of all the three cells and in detail we'll cover the individual cell formation in their respective videos. Okay. So before we actually go into the various steps and mechanism and the factors affecting hemopoiesis, First, we'll talk about when and where does hemopoiesis occur. Okay, so the starting point of hemopoiesis, the cells which ultimately will form the blood cells are known as stem cells, right? So the first cells or the starting cells are known as stem cells. Now, what do you mean by stem cells? Stem cells basically refer to those cells which have the ability or the capability to form different types of cells. Okay, they give rise to different types of cells in the body. Now, when we talk about stem cells, we talk about two types of stem cells. Okay, so stem cells are basically when we consider are two types. One is totipotent stem cell and one is pluripotent stem cells. So we use these two different terms when we talk about stem cells. Now, totipotent stem cells means that these cells can give rise to all other cells in the body. All right, toti means total. So they can form a total body from their own cells. Okay, so this is known as totipotent. Pluripotent means that they can form many cells, various cells, but not all cells. So they can form all the cells of the body and these can form many, but not all, not all. So this is the main difference between totipotent stem cells and 
pluripotent stem cells okay so coming back blood cells are derived from pluripotent stem cells remember not totipotent they are derived from pluripotent stem cells and pluripotent stem cells first appear in the yolk sac at about third week of intrauterine life now yolk sac is an embryological structure you study about it in detail when you study embryology so here we are considering yolk sac because this is the first site of hemopoiesis the pluripotent stem cells first appear in the yolk sac at about third week of intrauterine life and hemopoiesis first begins here in the yolk sac simultaneously they also appear at about third week in the mesoderm of these three structures aorta gonads and nephron now mesoderm is one of the three germ layers germ layers refers to the embryological layers when the baby is developing it shows three basic layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm mesoderm is the middle layer so mesoderm of aorta gonads and nephron also show hemopoietic activity due to presence of pluripotent stem cells okay so these events occur at third week of intrauterine life so hemopoiesis begins where in the yolk sac when at about third week of intrauterine life now at about third month so here if you consider a timeline at third week we've said that it begins in the yolk sac mainly at about third month of intrauterine life these pluripotent stem cells from the yolk sac they migrate to liver and spleen okay so liver and spleen also show hemopoietic activity which starts at about third month of intrauterine life at about fourth month these pluripotent stem cells reach the bone marrow and they start hemopoiesis in the bone marrow at about fourth or fifth month some books say 20 weeks or fifth month right so at around fourth to fifth month the bone marrow bm stands for bone marrow the bone marrow shows hemopoiesis now remember a point to be noted here is that the bone marrow which shows hemopoiesis is called red bone marrow and the bone marrow which does not show hemopoiesis is called yellow bone marrow we'll come to that in a second okay so this occurs during the fourth and the fifth month of intrauterine life for the remaining months that is sixth seventh eighth and ninth the level of hemopoiesis in bone marrow keeps on increasing and the level of hemopoiesis in spleen and liver keeps on decreasing the yolk sac has gone okay the yolk sac has given rise to its derivatives and it has disappeared it is normally not present at birth okay its derivatives are present so liver and spleen hemopoietic activity goes on decreasing and bone marrow activity goes on increasing till when the baby is born all almost all of the hemopoietic activity is shown only by bone marrow right so like i said the bone marrow which shows hemopoietic activity is known as red bone marrow so when the baby is born the bone marrow in all the bones is red bone marrow okay so when the baby is born red bone marrow is seen now if red bone marrow is seen the inactive form of bone marrow which is seen in adults is known as yellow bone marrow so here we have differentiated the red and the yellow bone marrow so red bone marrow is obviously red in color and yellow is yellow in color red bone marrow shows high cellularity cellularity means cellular population the number of cells present in the bone marrow at that given time since red bone marrow gives high rate or high activity of hemopoiesis so many precursor cells of various blood cells are present in the red bone marrow therefore the cellularity increases whereas yellow bone marrow is an inactive bone marrow therefore the number of cells in the bone marrow the number of precursor cells decreases okay now another point here is that red bone marrow is seen in the central bones the bones which lie along the midline of the body that is skull sternum the ribs the vertebral column the pelvis and the sacrum okay whatever bones lie in the midline of the body okay these show red bone marrow this is also known as axial skeleton because they form the axis of the body the long axis okay yellow bone marrow is seen in all the appendicular bones appendicular means the bones apart from these like humerus radius ulna but the proximal ends what do you mean by proximal ends proximal end means the ends which are nearer for example if this is your humerus and this is your skull and this is your sternum so this end of humerus is known as a proximal end right so proximal end of humerus femur and tibia 
proximal lens of humerus humerus femur and tibia these are the bones of the lower limb right so these bones in their proximal lens show hemopoietic activity and they consist of red bone marrow in adults remember at birth the baby has only red bone marrow in all the bones but in adults the red bone marrow persists only in the axial skeleton and the proximal part of these three bones so this is uh, when and how hemopoiesis occurs generally now we'll see the various steps of all the three blood cells so till now we've seen when and where hemopoiesis occurs now let's see the various steps of formation of the blood cells okay so starting with pluripotent stem cells as i've already explained pluripotent stem cells are those cells which can give rise to many different cells in the body but not all okay these are stem cells okay so this is the first generation of cells okay the pluripotent stem cells right a pluripotent stem cells they divide to give two different types of stem cells the myeloid stem cells and the lymphoid stem cells now remember myeloid series and the lymphoid series okay so these are also known as multipotent stem cells these are known as multipotent so pluripotent gives rise to multipotent stem cells and multipotent stem cells are of two types myeloid and lymphoid so this is the first series of cells and this is the second series of cells multipotent right pluripotent is the first series multipotent is the second series now first let's consider the myeloid stem cells now the myeloid stem cells will give rise to three different types of committed cells these three cells are known as committed cells so the third series of cells is known as the committed cells okay this is the third series it is known as the committed cells right okay committed cells these are known as the committed cells so myeloid stem cells they divide into three types of committed stem cells known as colony forming unit granulocyte monocyte i repeat colony forming unit granulocyte monocyte colony forming unit erythrocyte and colony forming unit megakaryocyte okay so these are the three different types of committed cells derived from the myeloid stem cells now okay coming here to the granulocyte monocyte colony forming units as the name suggests they will give rise to granulocytes right granulocytes include neutrophils eosinophils and basophils but they do not directly form those cells they form what we know as the blast cells now if you notice here till this level i have used the blue color and beneath i have used the red color now this means that these three levels of cells or these three series of cells only those are stem cells right those are stem cells and beneath them or below them they are not stem cells these are specialized or differentiated cells okay these are not stem cells remember okay so moving on granulocytes and monocytes the fourth series of cells this is the third series of cells the committed stem cells and the fourth series of cells these are known as the fourth series is known as the blast cells right i've read it here these are known as the blast cells now granulocytes and monocytes will be formed from this colony forming unit so they will form their respective blast cells first so there is myeloblast myeloblast will give rise to neutrophil it is a granulocyte eosinoblast will give rise to eosinophil again a granulocyte basoblast will give rise to basophil the blast cell of basophil will give rise to basophil right again a granulocyte and monoblast will give rise to monocyte so this is obviously monocyte so if you can see g and m so g and m so colony forming unit granulocyte monocyte will give rise to their respective blast cells and respective blast cells through various intermediate cells will give rise to neutrophils eosinophils basophils and monocytes ultimately right there are various steps in between which we'll discuss in their respective chapters here we'll discuss them in the wbc video and in the rbc part we'll discuss it in the next video in the rbc video so coming to the second part this is the colony forming unit erythrocyte 
this will give rise to the fourth series that is blast since it is a blast of red blood cells it is known as erythroblast which through various intermediate cells which eventually give rise to rbc or erythrocyte coming to the third committed stem cell derived from the myeloid series it is megakaryoblast as the name suggests megakaryo are precursor cell megakaryocytes are precursor cells of platelets so through intermediates the megakaryoblast will eventually give rise to platelets so till now we've seen the formation of rbcs we've seen the formation of wbcs but not all and we've seen the formation of platelets now a few wbcs remain and the remaining WBCs are derived from the lymphoid stem cells. So myeloid stem cells ends here and it gives rise to these cells, right? Via the colony forming units and the blasts and various intermediates. Coming to the lymphoid stem cells, lymphoid stem cells will give rise to pro T cells, pro B cells and pro NK cells. NK stands for natural killer cells. Now remember natural killer cells are a type of lymphocytes right lymphoid stem series will give rise to lymphocytes now we know lymphocytes are of two types T and B cells but there is a third type known as natural killer cells they are neither T cells nor B cells but they are lymphocytes there is a third category of lymphocytes known as natural killer cells so lymphoid stem cell will give rise to pro T pro B and pro NK which ultimately via various intermediates again will give rise to respectively T cells, B cells and natural killer cells, right? So this is the entire chart which represents the various steps of hemopoiesis. The in detail step of each cell will be covered in their respective videos. So this is all about hemopoiesis. All right, that's it from this video. I hope it made sense. I hope you understand. You can go back to your books and read it. It'll definitely make sense and it'll definitely be easier. I'll see you in the next one.